Welcome to another Business Spotlight, where we share insights, uh, reflections, lessons, and pearls of wisdom from local business owners. My name is Kerry James. I'm a business coach and facilitator. And on today's Business Spotlight, I'm delighted to welcome Mr. James Linderman, uh, founder of JL Executive Recruitment. Good afternoon to you, James. And afternoon, Kerry. Welcome. How are you doing? Yeah, very well. Thank you very much. Very well. Yeah. So let's get stuck straight in. JL Executive Recruitment. Bit of a clue in the title, but if you can give us a little bit of background, how long have you been in business, please, James, and what do you specialise in? Sure. So um, I set up Jail Executive Recruitment uh, Limited uh, back in 2008. We are international headhunters uh, working within the global renewable energy sector. Um, I was a lonely man for many years, either by choice, probably by choice, but also who wants to work with me. But I was by myself. Um, doing all full 360 degree recruitment from 2008 until the back end of 2019, when we uh, decided now is the time for growth and embarked on the next part of the journey. Very good. So you, from your background, James, you're clearly uh, mission orientated. I don't know where you've got a, a vision and some values to go with that, though. But is that yep. sounds like that's pretty important to you, is it? Having a, a very much so. I mean, I, I worked. Yeah, I'm very much so. I mean, I've worked in, in recruitment for 20 years, I'm 48 now, um, maybe uh, in two sectors, logistics, and in the last 16, 17 years in green energy, um, everybody is a client, whether you're the candidate who has aspirations of a move. Often 90% of the candidates we're targeting are not looking for a move because the best candidates are often very busy and not looking. So we're making them aware of new opportunity and they have aspirations like a company stroke client does. So to be, to be classed as best in class, everything we do is professional with integrity uh, and transparency. And our mission is to, is to be like that with both parties and with that conduit. Very good. Now, how competitive is this situation now? Global renewable energies, how, how competitive would you describe yeah, the market? It, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of organizations either have dipped the toe and got very wet or dipping their toe in a treading water, uh, maybe in a puddle. But we I fell into it. I was doing some change management work for E.ON, uh, the retail energy provider, and then went to France back in 2008 to a wind energy exhibition. There's plenty of those uh, for Europe, uh, European, Wind Europe, as it's now called, Americas. And I fell into it and was working for a company that sold turbines and then installed them and then maintained and, and serviced them. So they've been a major client, a company called Nordex. Um, we work in 23 countries with Nordex. And then due to personal reasons, and at the same time, uh, the situation being COVID, and um, Nordex selling part of their organization to actually Eon's parent company, RWE, the global German utility, that enabled me to start to look and, and expand the business with people uh, and colleagues. So there are, there are certainly companies specialising in green energy. I feel we're certainly in a good position to be called a player in the global market. Hmm. And I, I'm guessing there's all sorts of different sizes and shapes of companies within uh, the, yeah. the green energy marketplace, if you like. What what would be an ideal customer for you? Would you say, James, in terms of location? We're, we're, size we're very or, fortunate. We're dealing with blue, we're dealing with blue chip companies. We deal for our largest client is a 23 billion. Uh, Euro utility who own the wind farms, own the solar plants, and then put that electricity on the grid for the consumer or business consumer. Um, we work with SMEs as well. Um, I've done a lot of work more recently advising uh, clients who become who've turned into clients from candidates, and they might have consultancies, and you're advising them on buyers which are critical because it's new, uh, new to, or new growth for their small organ smaller organisations. So I do a lot of consulting myself as well as recruitment, um, but we're working with some of the major utilities, Scottish Power, um, Orsted, uh, both onshore and offshore uh, wind energy. OK, and you, you talked about um, some of your ways of working and your your your, your um, values and, and elements of your mission statement, etc. Is that a key part of how you differentiate yourself? How, how do, why, why do your so. customers choose you, would you say? Uh, well, I... I've, feel the benefit of working with GL executives with forensic. Um, 
a lot of our candidates or people we're placing are engineers by trade. Um, and they will naturally fold a piece of paper in half and look at the pros and cons of why that, that role would be right or why that move at this time is right. I believe from my experience of working independently one man band for many years, that deal, that placement was critical to my success or my me eating or buying presents at Christmas for my children. So forensically, you're analysing the deal or the process and eliminating any X's on the right hand side of the page to make the process very seamless so that when it does get to off the stage, the candidate A has less concerns to think about and you as the consultant have eliminated any X's so the client can be confident they're going to accept the role at the end of the process. Mm. So how do you describe the reputation you've built then with your with your clients? Transparent, honest, professional, detailed. Um, I don't profess to be an expert in wind energy. I don't need to be. If I was, I'd be applying for the job myself. Um, what we're very good at, and I certainly believe I have experience of, is people. Mm. Um, it's about making candidates and clients, as I said already, are the same. They both have aspirations. Is making them honest and advising and, and giving advice to why it's right time for them to move. As I say, the best candidates are never looking because they're so busy. They don't have time to apply. They don't have time to look outside their own day-to-day busy life so we're making them aware but we're thorough we are assisting them hand in hand throughout a difficult process moving house getting married having a baby moving job are three or four of the biggest things you're going to do so i certainly when i see a candidate's moving house and then wants to move job i get very concerned that's a big x in the on the right hand side of the page okay let's broaden things out a little bit if we may please uh, james clearly it's been we're early 2024 now it's been a an interesting few years from various perspectives Very much um, so. how how has have all these environmental changes whether it's uh, you know lockdown or hybrid working or inflation rates or interest rates how have those all impacted on your industry and your business would you say i think more about business because i say we are working within a field power energy infrastructure but i think my my i have to say it's my own personal story that that drives me um during covid i was walking every day as we all were i think the big w was walking and working but walking was the the inverted commas biggest w we did um that for me released a lot of serotonin i'd had mental health struggles my father had taken his own life when i was 16 so i'd always battled with am i going to be able to grow a business my father was a very good factory manager um my mother wanted him to have the trappings of life and maybe fellow family members, his brothers, who were very successful business owners. Um, but when he had his own business, he couldn't manage it. He couldn't deal with it and unfortunately took his own life. So I'd had this stigma attached to me throughout my 20s and 30s that I'm not able to grow a business either. So, but COVID for me brought clarity, brought confidence, brought belief and happiness. And happiness being the, the operative word. Once, you, once you're happy, you can achieve anything. And for me, that gave me the comments coincided with some luck in business. One of my clients, Nordex, sold a part of their business to RWE to go client side. They needed senior uh, members of staff ASAP. And the client I was dealing with trusted me for many years and needed to impress his new CEO. So for me, COVID was excellent. It was a real game changer, brought confidence and JL executive bore fruit for me, the original seed. Very good. Well, it sounds like you're you're growing very rapidly, which itself creates its own challenges, of course. But what what would yeah. you say are the main challenges for JL executive recruitment today, would you say, James? I think the biggest the last two years have been really you talk about the the, the fable, the little red riding hood or the three little pigs, the big bad wolf blowing a house down. I think certainly the last two years has been about making sure we're cementing and, and laying really strong foundations. And over the last couple of years, whilst the staff levels have been at the level we've accepted um, and, and been able to manage, now we're growing. It's only been able to grow because of the people in the right place. Bring on people that are good at things that you're not. You know what you know, you don't know what you don't know. And that's been my expertise. I was a one-man recruiter, had a database, Kerry James, excellent podcast host, email, telephone, Kerry Jane's brother, brother of excellent podcast host. And that's how I operated. I was very much systems scared me. So you bring in people that are excellent at processes, 
systems, procedure, KPIs, key performance indicators. And now you have clarity. You can see the wood from the trees and you're bringing in people that are good. You're playing to their strengths. If a man can't get on a, can't ride 25, 30 times a penny farthing, it doesn't make him a silly idiot. You don't call him a silly idiot because he could be maybe pump the tire of the penny farthing better than anybody else. So that means he has a fantastic part of that process, a need of that process. So it's about putting people in place, mm. in the place where they're good at, where they can shine, and maybe certainly better than, than you at that particular process. So I think that's been the helicopter view and having time now to see the wood from the trees, which enables you to strategize and enables you to see the bigger picture more clearly. Very good. Well, well, we'll definitely come back to what you think your top lessons are from, from your journey, James. But just before we do that, why don't we touch upon the future a little bit? So whether it's a three or a five year timescale, what sort of aspirations do you have for JL executive recruitment? Well, we've put some very big milestones in place at the beginning of 24. We've now got three heads of heads of power, head of the US, head of Americas and head of Europe. Uh, we've got a research division. So I, I see growth. I see that we've done the right, the foundations are solid, so the house can't be blown down, please God. Um, and we now see people coming into those specific areas, be it whether it's sales, whether it's project management, construction, or service within the regions they're going to work. And additionally, we have a very good resourcing and mapping division, which will support the consultants during the work and assignments that they lead and deliver. So it's a growth period. Um, we want bright, young, driven. And also these people now are joining at a time where they can sail the ship and be a captain of the ship. Um, and they can look back in two or three years time, five years, please God, and say, I was instrumental in getting us to this place. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use an analogy that we actually really, about three or four months ago, docked ship at Madeira. Madeira on the port of the coast of Funchal, on the, the capital of Funchal. You can assess your boat there and see what you need in the boat before going on the long journey across the Atlantic, which we've now embarked on. You don't want to bring in major change in the middle of the Atlantic, otherwise it could be you're in choppy waters. So we did it in Madeira, and we went from Southampton to Madeira, and we're now on the, the most important part of the, the voyage, the long voyage across the Atlantic. Very good. Well, I love an analogy, and there's, pl there's plenty of opportunities when it comes to talking about the sea and, and sailing, etc. It sounds like you're, yeah, you're expanding your fleet, as they say. So we are. what sort of size and shape are you now then, James? And what, oh, we're, what we're, eight people, we're, eight people, yeah, we're eight people now, and with the correct recruits this year, we'll go up to 14. Um, we've got budget for 14 different roles. Uh, we're very pleased we're just about to announce publicly a new head of Americas. This gentleman's come from elsewhere. It's a really good uh, signing. Just getting waiting for FIFA regulations to take place uh, the, the, for the for signing on fee uh, and to get clearance. But um, some some young recruiters, some interns as well. We do a lot of work with local universities, uh, Manchester University, Manchester Salford University, whereby people in the second year spend a few months at jail executive, and the idea is they come back after their third year of their business degree. And we've had one successful. Uh, young man do that with us and stay with us permanently. We've got a couple of interns starting in May. So come five years down the line then, James, are you hoping to have exited the business, created something you want to do? I, 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 I'll be exited, exited for a period of time on Bora Bora Beach, hopefully, um, in French Polynesia. That would be the ideal. And I've definitely achieved something. But no, I've still got the drive, the hunger. Uh, I'll only be 55 in seven years' time. Uh, but I think the next three or four years, very busy with hands-on approach, leading, listening to my managers, listening to the team. We've got a voice in this business. It's not, it's a culture of we are, there's no I and we. Um, I would have stayed by myself if it was going to be that. So it's very much listening to the, the team, the senior managers, letting people come from the grassroots up uh, and have a voice at Jail Executive. Very good. Okay. So coming back to what you started referring to in terms of the, the key points or the key lessons you've learned, if you were... If you were starting to either run a, a solo business or maybe maybe make that transition to start building a team and become like a business owner with a you know a business that starts to work without you, the journey you've been through to date, then James, what would you say are the, the key lessons you've learned in terms of? I think I think you've got to believe, but believe in your judgment, believe in your belief. 
I mean, I wake up, I've had some dark nights over the last couple of years. Is it going to, are we going to see the other side? Are we going to get to that point where we can breathe? We're not reacting all the time. But I think look at people and say where if they're excellent at something, well, utilize them for that, that part. They're excellent at something, utilize them for that. It doesn't mean just because they're not good at something doesn't mean they haven't got the skills for other areas that can benefit your business. So look at the, the big picture. Take your time out sometimes and stand back. It's like when you host a party. You always say, well, I never got a chance to enjoy the party because I was hosting it. Sometimes you need to take a stand back and look into the business and see what's going on and maybe don't say anything for a couple of weeks. Just watch, observe, and then make notes during that period. Mm. Um, but I think the biggest lesson I can give to anybody wanting to grow a business is you've got to bring in skills. You're not perfect at everything. I'm not. I, I was one man. I knew what I knew. I didn't know what I didn't know. And I still don't know what I don't know, obviously. But you know plenty, hopefully. You've learned from experience. If you don't learn from your life experiences, that's where you become very silly. Mm -hmm. um, and we all have life experiences, whether they're personal or professional. So I, I would say look at people's strengths, listen to other people. They've got a, a view. They've got a voice. Not all decisions taken by business owner uh, are always right. Um, let other people have a say. Um, if if they buy into your drive and determination, that means they've bought into you as a person. But they have a voice and they want a voice. So it's, as I say, there's no I in we. It sounds cliche, but it's true. Um, and let, let other people talk. And if they feel, if you feel it's right, let them implement it and run with it. Mm, absolutely. As Ricky Gervais said, there's no I in team. But if you look carefully, there's a me. But, there is a uh, me. Anyway. There is a me, true. <laughs> Backwards there, yeah. Very good, Kerry. <laughs> um, well, it's been great to hear about your story, James. One more uh, question, if I may, and that relates to if there are anybody maybe in the, um, you know, renewables uh, marketplace that's interested in, in a follow up conversation or maybe even somebody who, who might be wanting to work for a company that you you've described, a potential recruit. What might be a sensible next step, would you say, James? Well, certainly send if it's us as recruiters, send an email to uh, info at jler.co.uk. Um, if you want to have a chat with one of the team, we're delighted to do that. It doesn't cost anything. We give advice as well as uh, market candidates and place with work with clients. Um, I think, as I say, we're not we're experts in recruitment. Uh, we're experts in people. We don't have to be detailed technology wind experts. OK, it's the market we work in, but we're excellent and understand people. And that's what makes them the, the industries move around and, and flow. So get in touch info at jlr.co.uk and uh, you can get me on LinkedIn as well. Great. Well, we will um, also add your website URL to, to these videos when we post them as well, James. So, Thank you, Kerry. James, I've loved the analogies. I've loved the lessons you've shared. Thank you so much for your time you. and sharing your story and all the very best with uh, JL Executive Recruitment. Thanks, Kerry. Appreciate your time. Take care. All the best for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.